Yeah, he's, killed. he's absolutely killed. That's good. He's, uh, okay, that's yeah, good. That's good. 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 I've been coaching him well then. Yeah. Yeah. Few of few of tailed off. Nothing to worry about. No, no. What was it called, David? I don't know what we're going back to that Huddersfield League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was what, sorry? Jazz. Talking about the Huddersfield League. They got fined and Vanda went to the. Oh, um, yeah, walked on the pitch. Um, I do. I wonder what you're about then, but of course I do, yeah. Yeah, Gary Monk, give him a little nudge. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say, a nudge. <laughs> what are you? Are you as bad as him now? Egghead. Not allowed to say that, are you now? Because now I'll get told off now. Upside down, Ed. Should be like, yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Exactly that. See, you laughed, so now we're in it together. Yeah, yeah. That's a joke. Anyway. Darren, is it half past two or two? Well, the, the Andy Walker thing said half two to me, but I've something that's since been discussed for saying two o'clock. All right. But the email I've got from Andy said that the gas has been boiled until half two. I don't, I don't know about the embargo, I so put you're going to. I've yet, just in case. Do embargo by all means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, any, any talk of Muskin <clears throat> Heights embargo, we'll just start off there. That's okay. I mean, I got a new drink from England. <laughs> yeah, just as we're live, we've got a so well, his, his <clears throat> yeah, that's the thing. Oh, that confirmed, is it? Oh, good. Fair play to him. I shall text him this afternoon. <laughs> what? <laughs> you laugh at everything I say. You laugh. At <laughs> I'm, st I'm struggling in my own world now. Like when am I I'm in my own head now? I'm going. Was that serious? I don't know. I think it was serious. It's like laughing all the time. That's no no comment. No comment. But yeah, all right, we'll start with that, Gareth. It sounds like someone you know very well, someone who's been a regular at Burnley this season, and um, a new contract and England going in the right direction, I guess. Well, certainly um, it's pleasing to think he does come to our games quite a bit. That means something must be going right as regards to the players we're using, of course. However, Gareth, um, fantastic. You know, a big fan of what he's, he's looking to achieve. Certainly I have a, a, a small understanding of what it's like to be a... A manager, you know, uh, certainly at the, the best level, if you like, but not international level. I can only imagine it ramps up again, and I think he handles it fantastically well. Um, and he seems to be making his own pathway with what he's doing, um, you know, with uh, the players and, uh, and bringing in younger players. And I think, certainly in the World Cup, I think the country bought into that. So for lots of good reasons, um, I think that he's certainly deserving of a, a contract that keeps him there and keeps him doing what he's doing. Does it make a difference to the players that it does come to watch games? I mean, we make a lot of it, but does it affect this thing and the credibility of the club? Um, I've never really thought about it. I think the credibility is more that if the, the national managers here Others, others, of course, as well, but being an Englishman, then Gareth's here, then it means that we must be doing something right as a team because he's looking at our players, of course. Um, but for the club at large, sorry, for the players at large, I don't, I don't think, I don't know, I've never really asked them. I don't think they think there's us all. Gareth Southgate's here, they might do. Um, but I think they just get on with the game, I think. No, but the other side of that is that, you know, I know four or five years ago, and then you imagine Capella or whatever, may have not chosen a Burnley. But things, are, um, things are changing because... Yeah, but I think I think the the group of players, the 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 pool of players. Um, also, we've got quite a few, obviously, um, English British players, but English in this case. Um, so, I think that as well. Um, I think a number of different things have changed for Burnley Football Club, and, and of course, we've we've four out or this is four out of five seasons in the Premier League. So, obviously, some of our players must be performing. So, I think that's part of it as well. James Tarkovsky back in the England squad, that implies that he's fifth of the weekend. Yeah, well, they've, they've, Gareth is aware and his staff are aware. He's just had a, a, a minor sort of situation. We're hoping it settles down. He's not definitely clear. Um, I think Gareth wants to make it clear that he's certainly one that he thinks of. Um, and we'll wait and see. I mean, we'll know more. He's, he's been on the grass today, but we're just keeping an eye on him, so we'll know more tomorrow. What's it like being a player that played in this position and thinking, this is the player I see the potential and watching that kind of potential happen? I've enjoyed it. I think I've enjoyed the centre halves. I mean, obviously, you know, I look at the whole side, but because I was a centre half, I've always got a keen interest on how the, the centre backs are doing. Um, you know, and, and I think they've done, I think we've had different centre halves. You know, going back to when I first got it, I thought Jason Shackle was fantastic for me with, with Michael Duff. Long he's been here, the longest out of all the group continues to just keep nipping away at his career and gets games in for us in the Premier League, which is great. And of course, international games as well. Um, Tarkin, and Ben, you know, Ben's one keeps going under the radar, but, you know, I think he's an, an excellent centre-half. Um, ben Gibson, we're still waiting to see, of course. Um, so I've enjoyed all the players. Keno, 
you know, Kino's another one, done ever so well. Um, I, I enjoy the development of the defenders just because of my background, but I equally enjoy the, you know, the whole process with all the players. But when that kind of scouting starts, you, know, you see a player that you think I can develop, do you think that could be a future England player? Could you see the science there? Um, I think there's some markers, um, but they're not, you know, what you think and their progression is not always hand in hand, you know, because with coaching, what people sometimes forget is the, the player is the most important person within it. You know, as a coach, I can only guide what I think is correct and so can my staff. Um, it's them who takes ownership of it and it's them that really pushes themselves. So it's the players that deserve all the credit. Um, you know, we're doing our job to push them in the right direction. But once they're up and running, it's how hard they want to go. It's how many details they want to put into the profession to get the rewards out. And I think we've got a group who have done that historically for us and continue to do so. And I, I really enjoy that side of it. You know, obviously, we've got to get the team to win. The, the, the closest thing to it is players who are developing and moving on and getting on with their careers. Because that's certainly when I got into coaching, that's what I wanted to give back was giving the players a chance to have a much better career than me and, and be considerably better than me which is not always that difficult most of them find it quite an easy task and no, no place for, uh, for Joe Hart in the single squad I think the fact that the Vapors there shows that he's kind of not turned his career around because he was a good goalkeeper but you know there's a difference between good and the best I think he's enjoying it. I think he, he bought into the challenge, which I made clear to him he'd have to with the, the good goalkeepers that we've got here. Um, you know, uh, arguably the, the hierarchy is obviously with Popey and Tom mainly, um, but with Anders and Legs as well um, in support and working hard in that group. And Joe's obviously got the shirt at the moment. I think he's playing well, but I think, I think the biggest thing is, you know, buying into what we do he, when he when he came in I said it this is not you know walk in the park being part of us we've got to earn the right every single time we go out there we've got to fight for everything that we get and I think he's bought into that and you know added to the the resilient nature of the team by putting off some really important saves at the right time do you think I don't really to be honest with a player of his experience it's not like I sit down every day you know talking to him about all of this it's you know, he's mature enough to know uh, his thoughts on where he's at. I know he's enjoying it. That's absolutely for sure. Um, and I think he's bought into what we are, you know, and what the team is. I, I don't think he's questioned anything other than getting on with that. And I think he's enjoying the group as well, which is always a benefit, I think, when, when players have a connection with each other. Um, the rest of it will take care of itself in due course. Um, and if it's international, then that's for Gareth to decide. If it's not, I think he'll carry on getting on with what he's doing. I know wins are important, but back to that wins and the, and the kind of circumstances that we had a game that was not an easy game. But I mean, in turn, you mentioned the word belief. Did your belief not return? I don't, I, don't think, I don't think your belief goes away I, I think all it is it, it's at stretch because you're not getting a win because that's what we all play for you know let's say you, you, your inner voice is saying about the development of the players but, but the obvious one is you've got, you've got to win you know and you're a manager that's the job finding ways of win I've always been intrigued with we found two different ways to win in the last two Premier League games at a time where we needed them wins as well um, one was a good performance one was a fighting performance Um but the biggest thing of all is winning. You know, eventually, that's what it's about. Um, fans enjoy it. Players enjoy it. The league table looks better. Um, and we're getting back to somewhere where we want to be. I, I don't think we're still there. I think there's still work to be done. But I think the players are finding that, that clarity. I mentioned a few weeks ago, a bit of a sort of a fog. Um, and, you know, this, this idea of the, the hangover of success, you know, w when you've got there, what's the fight that got you there? Is it kind of softer then or is it still there? Um, and slowly but surely that feeling's coming back, that, that feeling to go and challenge, to win games, to work, all the things you have to do to win a game in the Premier League. It's very, very difficult. Some weeks you can play very well, some weeks you have to fight. You know, and we've had two different weekends where we've played well and then had to fight, but we've got six points out of the last two games, and that's pleasing. Got to go and do it all again against Huddersfield. And throughout your time here, the word that's popped up is kind of resilience. Is that a reminder of the teams of resilience? That's what they needed on Sunday, wasn't it? Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, you know, the, the, it's been a marker of ours for, since I've been here, or certainly since the first summer when I got my own group together. Um, you know, but I think that's, you know, we are what we are, but all good teams down the years, you know, even some of the most offensive teams have always had a strong resilience, a strong backbone, a strong belief system, because it's, it's hard, you know, when, when times are going well, that's, that's uh, it's not easy, but it's an easier situation it's when they're not going so well. That's sometimes when you see the true character of a group. Um, and I think there was a bit of noise outside of us, you know, before the last two league games about 
come on then, which way is this going? And then we've pulled out two wins. It doesn't guarantee the next one, but it, it guarantees that the mindset and the, the focus is there and the resilience is, is rebonding, if you like. So we will need that going forwards. But when you know your players, I mean, you know your <coughs> Excuse players me. almost intimately, uh, more, more so than our coaches, you, did you pick up on the fact that that belief does return. Do you see it on the same or do we make too much of that? Just a bit? No, 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 I don't think you make too much of it. I think they're human. They, they, in fact, the belief of a win probably galvanises even better now because they get not so many times players now. You know, they, they, some bottom by themselves, some they open themselves up. Um, some it's just by the nature of what football is now. You know, certainly the Premier League, recognised worldwide, lots incredible amounts of media attention whether that be normal well what we know is normal this what we're doing now for papers etc or whether it's phones and you know whatever media streams are going on in their lives so i think there's a lot more for them to contend with um but the win it doesn't solve everything but it doesn't half lighten the load of all of that you know when you're winning people let you get on with it and uh you know suddenly a bit more freedom comes into the performances and i hope that continues to happen obviously so is Saturday a good game or is it another fight? I think a bit of everything. I think it's, it's funny the other week we were saying about must wins. I remember in here and I said, every game's a must win in the Premier League. You know, yeah, every game is so important. Um, so we just look at it like that. We've prepared well all season. We've had a lot of challenges outside of just the Premier League. We all know that. Um, but now the focus is back on that and we look forward to the next one. Did you look though at the time <coughs> between international Excuse games me. and things? Not must win games, but they're winnable games. That's the I think... Points. It's all right thinking it, but when that whistle blows, it often doesn't play out like that. So we've learned that over the years. So we know that you've got to be right all of the time now who you play. It's fair to say, quite obviously and statistically, I mentioned this a lot, the, the top six, if you like, very difficult games home and away. They, they have been, you know, for us and many other teams. Um, but every game's a challenge in the Premier League. You've got to be right on top of your, your performance. Whatever style of performance that is, you've got to be right on top of it. You know what Huddersfield are not going through. <coughs> you know when people make judgments about your side that they're not good enough for the Premier League. People are saying that about Huddersfield at the moment. Is that a difficult place to be? Because you say when, when you win, people... Well, it's, it's a familiar place to us at Burnley, to be honest. We've, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we've had year on year, <coughs> excuse me, we've had year on year of that, yeah, no, year on year of that kind of thinking. Um, less so last year and going into this year because of that good season. Um, but no, I, I think... I think there's only a handful of clubs now that it's a given for in the Premier League. I really do. Um, you know, and even the, the power of Man United this season, early season, they'll be fine, by the way. I'm absolutely sure of that. But, you know, not the start that they would wanted. Um, and that's a, a, a fantastic manager, fantastic club, fantastic group of players still having a challenge. So I don't think, uh, oh, certainly I won't be taking that as field lightly because of what people might consider of them. I know they've got a good group of players giving everything. They work very hard. They pressed uh, the life out of Tottenham, um, you know, and pushed them all the way. So, no, no, there's, there's certainly no uh, gimmies, as I call them, in the Premier League, without a doubt. You've got to earn the right for everything. Whatever noise they're getting is part of life in the Premier League. We just focus on ourselves. Player-wise, is Robbie Brady kind of back in, in the group? No, he's, he's missed a few days. He won't go away. Um, he's got a niggly hamstring. It's, it's often the case when you've had a long-term injury, all these little niggles, nothing too serious, but it's four days here, five days there, and there's been a few weeks of that. So we're hoping over this international break that he gets back to, you know, sort of a clean bill of health and, and, and day after day's training because he just keeps dropping down with a few things. Um, nothing, nothing major, but just niggly little things. So we're hoping this, this international break will get him back um, to where we want him to be. Stephen Stephen's good. Um, he's, you know, we'll see how he is at the weekend. Um, he's got a personal situation that he's attending to. Um, so we'll leave him with that for now. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ben's, he's going well. He's not too far away. I would, I would expect if everything continues to go, it is going. By the end of the international window, we might even get him into a reserve game or during the international window, sorry, might get him in a reserve game, um, which will be good for him. So he's going along nicely. Um, so, so, you know, it, so far, it's looking promising. And everyone else is... Yeah, yeah, I think that's everyone. Thank you. Thank you.